Hello, and welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we're gonna to take a look at using relative measurements to up your nature journaling game. I carry a ruler and a measuring tape with me, and these are great for getting an absolute measurement on something. I can put this down next to an object and find out how many millimeters it is. But for getting the proportions in a drawing, how big it is this way versus this way, I can take a bunch of measurements with this that will work, but sometimes the critters are so far away from me that that's really impractical. If I'm, say, looking at a duck, I can't get up there and use this to measure its bill. I have to use another system, and this is where relative measurements come in. We're gonna take a look at several different strategies of using this. First, we're gonna take a look at when you have an object in your hand. We're going to be tracing and using other aspects of the real object to allow us to get our image down on paper a lot more easily to get a life-size drawing. We're also going to use this same technique when you can't trace something. So there's a bunch of ducks out there by the side of that island. I want to make some diagrams and drawings of those showing the distances that they are from each other and showing the relative proportions on each duck. I can't use these, but I can use relative proportions. Let's take a look. Tracing isn't cheating. It's a great way to get the basic shape of something down on your piece of paper. I found this duck wing in the middle of the trail. The duck had been killed by a hawk. The hawk pulled off the wing and left it perfectly intact for me to sketch. So I picked it up and plopped it right onto my sketchbook. I traced around the outside edges in a light colored pencil. I could also put in some of the, the internal features, the edges of the major feather groups, by noticing where they start and where they end on the outside contour of the wing. Then I move the wing and continue making that shape. By moving the wing back and forth on top of the drawing, moving it to the side, putting it back on top of the drawing and moving it to the side, I can check and recheck the proportions of this wing. Once I've got the basic shape, I can pick up a ballpoint pen or a heavier pencil and start to draw a little bit more boldly and deliberately, creating the lines that you'll see that really define the edges of the object. But I'm doing that all on top of a light framework of pale pencil lines that is already blocked in that basic shape. And all that came from tracing. Tracing was particularly helpful on the back edge of those long, primary feathers. Those are the long feathers that stick down on this drawing. I wanted to get the right number of feathers and to get them the right distance apart. So what I did is I would start to draw each one with my wing right on top of the drawing, and I would just start my lines along that back edge. That allowed me to get all those feathers in, boom, 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 exactly the right distance from one another, and then put the wing to the side and completed the drawing. You can use this with any object that is flat and even something that's got a lot of dimension, like this bird wing. If you can put it on your page, you can trace it. And that's a great way to start getting your data. The result is I get a measured drawing. I get a drawing of this duck wing, and all the different feather groups are going to be the right lengths. It's a really easy way to record a bunch of information really quickly on my Nature Journal page. So today I've used several strategies to get my observations on paper with accurate measurements without using a ruler. I've got, I've got directly tracing something. It's just a way of getting data onto your paper. And I can even take it further by kind of including little landmarks of, uh, 
of where the tips of feathers are or other important details. So not just a little outline. I can kind of make that more nuanced and make it easier for me to get the information about what I see with a wing that I found or a shell that I found and put that down on my piece of paper. I can also use these relative measurements. Looking out there at that little group of ducks and avocets, which are these long-legged shorebirds that were on the edge of a little island, I was able to use the length of a duck as my measurement tool. So not measuring with inches, but measuring with ducks. So once I put in my first duck, the next duck is two duck lengths over, and then the next one is, is, is a duck and a half over. And so I'm using the duck as my unit of measurement. And so then it's not just a, I'm, I'm not just making a, a little drawing, here's an island and look, there's some ducks on it, but I'm actually recording some information about the spacing that these animals are apart from one another. And when I do that, I notice a really interesting thing. The, the ducks themselves are more spread out, and then there's a little group of avocets, and the avocets were really close together. So the avocets were really shoulder to shoulder, and I was able to, I'm able to both observe that and capture that information in my journal because I'm making my, my marks on my paper with more precision because I'm using my duck length as a unit of measurement. And finally, I made a sketch of a little sleeping teal. And to do that, I first blocked in the basic shape, put in my head, and then I double checked it. I used my, the, the length of the head as, a, as, as my unit of measurement and how many teal head lengths is this body. And I, kind of, I, and I discovered that I, I had made my body too short. So I lengthened my body and I was able to get a more accurate picture of that. So those are all systems of using measurement in my journal. And they just make my note taking more accurate. Still don't want to get wrapped around the axle about having to make a pretty picture. But I want to think about how can I get more accuracy Recording more information. I think that's probably the best way to think about it. Think of it, you want a journal page that's dense with data, dense with information. And drawing is a really useful way of doing that. So if I can make the proportions on those drawings a little bit more close to the way that the teal really looks, that's, that's going to be very useful for me when I'm keeping my journal notes. So your Nature Journaling Challenge this week is to try to use some of these strategies on pages of your journal. Go out somewhere and think about, other than directly measuring something, how can I use some of these maybe relative units of measurement, or how can I or you find something and experiment with tracing it and see how much information you can get out of that trace. I think you're going to find that the, the, the accuracy the precision of the data that you get in your journal jumps up a notch, and that's really fun. So until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo.